The second characteristic of sound, one that our ears can easily distinguish, is frequency. Sound comes from disturbances in the air. When air molecules compress together and expand apart, they create sound. The timing of these changes determines the frequency of the sound. The unit to measure frequencies is cycles per second, CPS, or hertz, abbreviated HZ. Variations that are very slow, like 5 or 10 times a second, sound like individual pulses, sort of like rhythms, like eighth notes or sixteenth notes played by a drummer. We won't hear them as a pitch because they're too far apart. But if they get faster, they'll begin to blend together. This results in pitch. It's similar to the trick that boys used to do with their bikes when they attached playing cards to their bike frames. Starting out, you could hear each spoke hit a card, but soon the impacts blend together, creating a motorcycle-like sound, or at least that's what they hope it sounds like. Let me demonstrate this effect. This is a sawtooth wave vibrating about four times a second. Clearly, it's not one sound, it sounds like a drummer playing 16th notes, 1E and a 2E and a that kind of stuff. But if I increase the frequency, as they get closer and closer together, that speed is still slow enough to distinguish each transient, but as I approach 20 hertz. There it's beginning to take on the characteristics of a single sound blended together. And now, it has characteristics that you could sing. These singable characteristics are pitches. Vibrations that are regular, that have a frequency, are often heard as pitches, especially when they're in the vocal range. Generally, frequencies ranging from about 50 hertz up to about 5,000 hertz are sounds that we associate with pitches because that's the range of musical instruments. If I change the wave shape to a sine wave, this is effect is a little bit easier to hear. Sounds at 50 hertz and below don't have a much of a, of a pitch sound. And sounds higher than 5,000 hertz are difficult to sing, difficult to play with, even with the highest of instruments, and therefore they lose their pitch quality as well. And of course, some frequencies are beyond what you can hear. Probably you can't hear this 20k tone. Another factor of frequency and pitch is noise. Noise occurs when the frequency of a waveform changes constantly. The more random the changes, the more broadband the noise seems. White noise occurs when you have equal energy per frequency. In other words, Every frequency in the audio spectrum has the same amount of energy. To our ears, white noise seems relatively bright. That's simply because the last octave, 10,000 hertz to 20,000 hertz, has more energy than the first octave, 20 hertz to 40 hertz. 20 hertz to 40 hertz only has a difference of 20 hertz, whereas 10,000 hertz to 20,000 hertz has a difference of 10,000 hertz. 
if there's equal energy for each frequency, then as octaves get higher and higher, they will have more energy. White noise is not very useful to audio engineers, but pink noise is. Pink noise is used to measure the frequency response of sound systems. Pink noise has equal energy per octave, not equal energy per frequency. So every octave, regardless how many frequencies are contained in that octave, will have the same amount of energy. Sound system engineers will often play pink noise through PA systems so they can measure the response of the speakers. Noise can also have frequency ranges. This kind of noise is relatively low in frequency, and you can see over here that the variations in the pulses are rather wide. The wider the pulses, the lower the frequencies. But as I increase the probability, then the pulses become narrower and the frequency range gets higher. This noise sounds brighter than this noise. It's important to know that all sorts of instruments generate noise. Many percussion instruments generate noise. The start of sounds and the consonants in my speech generate noise. Noise are sounds that you can imitate, but you really can't sing them. Frequencies, however, are sounds that you can sing. We can see the differences between noises and frequencies simply by looking at the waveform of the recorded audio. I'm going to zoom in here on a portion of this song, and we can see that this sound right here is mostly made of frequencies simply because you can see a repeating pattern. If a pattern repeats, it has a frequency, and that's why this bass part is playing pitches. But if we look at this hat sound right here, let me loop it. If we zoom in here on the beginning of it, you can see that the variations are rather short, but they're not consistent. That's why this hi-hat has such high frequencies in its sound. It's made of noise, but it's restricted to high-frequency noise. Let's compare that to a kick. Here's a kick, and I'll loop it. You can see that these waves are much further apart, but there's no regular space between them. They're constantly changing. And that's what makes the kick have a thump sound as opposed to a tone. If we look at this guitar tone, you can see that it has a fair amount of chaotic vibration at the very beginning before it goes into something much more regular. That's why we hear the little thump sound at the beginning. If we look at this vocal track, Stop procrastinating. Stop we can hear a variety of kinds of sounds. Noises like the S and another noise like the T. Let's see how they look. The S is very chaotic. It doesn't have any specific vibration to it at all. Stop. But the O of stop, you can see a regular frequency to it. That's why there's a pitch there. Here we are. There's the C sound, and then you can see the vowel A has pitch. So looking at the waveform can help you determine whether it's a noise or whether it's a frequency.